Till now we have studied about the conversion of Moore machine to Mealy machines and in this lecture we will be studying about the conversion of Mealy machine to Moore machine. So here is our question. Convert the following Mealy machine to its equivalent Moore machine. So here we have a Mealy machine given and our task is to convert it to its equivalent Moore machine. So let us look at this and how do we know that this is a Mealy machine? We see that the outputs are associated to the transitions. So this makes it clear that this is a Mealy machine. So we have to convert it to its equivalent Moore machine. And listen to this lecture carefully because this is a little different from the conversion of Moore to Mealy. So before we start, let's see what are our inputs and outputs in this example. Our inputs are zeros and ones and our outputs are A and B. Okay, so now we will convert this to its equivalent Moore machine. So let's see how we can do this. So first of all, we'll start with the starting state that is state A. So here A is my starting state. So I start with the starting state which is state A and let's see what happens to state A on getting input 0 and 1. So on input 0, state A goes to state B and what is the output that it gives? It gives output A. So let me draw state B over here and state A will go to state B on input 0. But as this is a Moore machine, we cannot associate the output to the transition like this. We have to associate the output to the states. So how do we associate the output to the states? You look at this. It is giving an output A and it is going to B. So what I will do is, I will associate the output A to the state B. So I'll give an A over here. Okay, so the output is associated to the state now. That is the property of a Moore machine. Okay, now we have completed this part. Now A on getting input 1, what happens? A on getting input 1, it goes to state C. So let me draw state C over here. This is state C and A goes to state C on getting input 1. And what is the output that it gives? The output that is, it gives is A. And since it is going to state C, I will associate this output A to state C. So I'll write an A over here. Okay, so we have completed for state A. Now let me come to state B. State B on input 0, where does it go? And on 1, where does it go? So we see that state B on input 0, it goes to B itself. And it gives the output small b. So if I do it like this, if I send b to b itself on input 0, then I have to associate this b to the state that it goes. But I already have an a over here. So I cannot associate that b to this state b. In this kind of condition, what you have to do is, you have to make another state. Another state of b and let me call it b b and let me call this one b a okay and this will have the output b associated to it so now we have created a new state and i can say that b will go to b on input 0 so this b i'll send to this b over here on input 0 and the output it gives is b so the output b is associated to this bb over here now let's see b on input 1 what happens to it b on input 1 it goes to state c and it should give the output a so i can send this b to this state c because this gives the output small a so that is what i want so i will send this b to state c on getting input what 1 okay so now we have completed this state b now coming to state C. If you look at state C, on input 0 where does it go? It goes to state B giving an output A. So I can send it to this B over here because this give gives an output A. So I will send C to this B A over here on getting input 0. Okay, now come to this C. 
on input 1 what happens to state C? It goes to C itself and the output associated is B. So I cannot send this C to this C itself because I have to associate the output B but this, this C already has an output A associated to it. So in this case what I have to do? I have to create another state for state C which I will call CB and it one, this one let me call it CA and I will associate the output B to this state C. So I have another state created here and C on input 1 will go to the C that has output B which is this one. So I will send this state C to this state CB giving the output B when it gets the input 1. Okay, so now we have completed for this CA also. So we have completed for this one, this one and this one. So is it complete? No, it's not complete. Why? Because we have created new two new states over here and we did not mention what will happen to these two new states when they get input zeros or ones. So let's first start with this one, BB. On input 0 what will happen to it? On input 1 what will happen to it? Now how do we do this? Since this is a B, I will use this B itself from the Mealy machine to calculate for this B. So let's see, B on input 0 what happens? It goes to B itself giving output small b. So I can send it to this b itself because this b gives the output small b. So this will go to this b itself on input 0. And on input 1 where does b go? b goes to c giving an output a. So I have to send this b to a state c which will give output a. And where is that? We have this c over here which gives an output a. So what I'll do is I'll send this state b to this state C over here on getting input 1. So we have completed for this state called BB. Now coming to this state CB, what happens to CB? You can check using the state C over here. On input 0 what happens? On input 0 state C goes to state B which gives an output A. So which is the state B that gives an output A? It is this one. So I will send this state CB to this state BA on input 0 and on input 1 what happens? C stays in C itself giving an output B and which is the state C that gives output B? It is this one itself. So on input 1 I can send it to itself. Okay, so now we have completed all the states and now we get the equivalent Moore machine for our Mealy machine that was given here. So one thing that we can notice here is that when we converted from Moore machine to Mealy machine, the number of states were same. Means the number of states in the Moore machine were equal to the number of states in the Mealy machine that was converted. But when we converted Mealy machine to Moore machine like this one, the number of states increased. So if you look at this, we had three states here. But in the final Moore machine that we have, we have one, two, three, four, five states. We have an increased number of states. By how much does the state increase? So let's say that in the Mealy machine we had x number of states and y number of outputs. So x is the number of states that I have and y is the number of outputs. Then in the Moore machine that we obtain we could have x into y number of states at maximum at a maximum of x into y number of states. So in the Mealy machine if you had x number of states and if it gives y number of outputs then in the Moore machine that you convert it could have x into y number of states in total. So this is at maximum that means it could have a maximum of this many states. It does not mean that it will always have this many. In the worst case it may have this many number of states or it could be lesser than that. So this is how you convert a Mealy machine to its equivalent Moore machine. You can also draw the transition table for this. It's very easy just as we used to draw for the Moore machine you can draw it using these states. And one thing that you can notice is that here in this Moore machine that we designed all the states they have an output associated with it like B is having A, this BB is having B. 
this is having A, this is having B. But what about this A? This A does not have any output associated with it. And why is that? That is because if you look at the original Mealy machine, you see that this A did not have any incoming edges. It only had outgoing edges. That is why this A did not get any output associated to it. So in order to just complete it, you can, I'll just leave it like this, meaning that you could either give an output A or B to this. It does not matter. So, I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one with more examples.